Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, this one we're going to be just taking a look on how we're going to be just using the uh, reading from the remote server. Actually, it's going to be uh, for the remote server reading, but the whole idea would be the same. Uh, so first thing first, let's try to uh, use the Axios, which is one of like the library we're going to be just using for uh, reading or sending or communicating with the server. And the way how we're going to uh, install it is just like the way we're going to install any other uh, React library, uh, sorry, like the NPM library. And then we're going to be just using NPM uh, Axios or install Axios and I have already done that. But the way you're going to do it is if you are on uh, Visual Code Studio, you're going to go to the terminal, uh, get new terminal. And on that new terminal, you're going to be typing NPM either I or you can say install and Axios. So in my case, since I've already installed it, it's not going to install anything, but uh, basically that would be the idea. So we have added one more library to our uh, package.json file over here. So you can see it uh, that Axios has been added over here. Now this Axios is a library we're going to be just using, as I've said, for the communication purpose uh, when we are trying to interact with, with the server. So for this example, I have picked uh, one simple API from the numbers api.com slash random. And then we have like the query parameters, min 10 and max 20. And what it does is it's going to give you some little number facts whenever you are um, refreshing it or every time that you're going to be just calling, then it's going to give you, let me extend this thing a little bit more so, so we can see it. And then you, you, we can see uh, whenever I'm refreshing, then we can see that the values are going to be just changing. And one thing that I want to mention is every time when you are um, trying to have a, a communication with the server, one easier way to see what's going on is just to go to the network and then try to uh, refresh the page. And then immediately you're going to uh, see uh, the what what kind of like API is being called and what kind of uh, information we're getting back. So here, this is what we are getting back and the preview is going to be just like this one. And headers is going to be what you're going to be just looking on the data. What kind of information has been passed? What kind of URL we have been using? And those are like the whole informations including like the request method or the HTTP method and the status code, we haven't discussed on that one, but basically, uh, hopefully you know that one. And that is what the server would be returning back to the uh, client saying, yes, I've got your request and everything is okay when it is 200. And we have like the status codes uh, for 300, whenever there is a redirect, uh, 400 for the user errors and 500 for the server errors. So how can we get this information which is available on the remote server on the local machine, let's say, uh, sorry, on the local application that we're running. Uh, let's say we are uh, using this one, uh, the one that we have been using from our um, layouts. And then let's add one more button over here. And whenever we are clicking on that button, then we're going to be able to see those random messages over here, right? So let's go ahead and then just do that. And I'm going to go to, uh, we can come here and then we're going to be just creating a brand new, um, a brand new uh, component. So for this, we're going to call it like a uh, number, uh, let's call it like number info uh, to say like number information and JS uh, over here. I'm going to be just using like the uh, functional component over here. So we're going to be just using import react from react. And we're going to be using Axios as well. Uh, import uh, Axios from Axios. And we're going to have like function number info. Uh, then either this, or we can also use conus uh, number info uh, equals then we're going to be just using our props if there is anything that we're going to be just accepting and we're going to be having all that. So before I forget it, then I'm going to say export default uh, number info, all right? Then default export 
Port. Default. There you go. All right. So let's use a very return, a very simple one. I'm going to have a paragraph hello from number info that we're going to be just adding this in. Let's add next to this one. I'm going to have like call and number, not another one. Number info. And we need to uh, get it. Call number info. And we need to have this one. Import number info from number info. All right, so we're going to uh, take a look on this one. This guy is not happy. Let's check. Yep, this one is happy. So uh, hello from the number info. Now we know like all the plumbing is fine. So over here, what we would like to do is just to go out and try to read uh, the data and then uh, get it back to, um, you know, just somewhere we're going to be just showing. Let's say I'm going to have over here div um, and I'm going to have this one. Didn't like it because I'm having more than one. So uh, over here, what I would like to do is just to show some information whenever I'm clicking on this one. So for this, I'm going to be just using a button uh, and let's call it click for random. Then what we would need to do is on click, uh, we're going to have uh, what we are going to be just over here. That's going to be our button handler, button handler over here. So over here, we're going to come and then just add like the button handler so that we can say const or we can use like the usual one, function button handler. And from here, we're going to be uh, checking uh, the, the value that we're going, whenever we're clicking on this one, what we would like to do is to change the value of this one from what we get from the, the remote server. So for that, uh, here is where we're going to be just start to use like the Axios over here. And Axios is going to be just very straightforward uh, for any of like the HTTP methods. We have like the corresponding values uh, for the gates, for the post, for the uh, uh, patch, for the put and for the delete. In this particular case, we're just reading. So we're going to use axios.get, as simple as that. And we're going to be just adding the URL over here. And the URL for the uh, this one is going to be from here. So I'm going to just simply copy that and add it here. Now, from here, we're going to be just using the then. And this is the uh, kind of like the promise that we're getting back uh, when it is successfully handled. So from here, I'm going to get like the, let's say return, let's call it our response. And from this response, then I'm going to assign like values that I'm looking for. Uh, for the sake of checking, I'm going to have like log and response just to check it so that whenever I'm clicking on this one, then, you know, like the, the value on response, uh, response. This one is right there. Okay. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to check. Uh, let's go to that, the console. Uh, and I'm going to extend this thing a little bit and to the console. Let's clear this. And whenever I'm clicking on that, then you can see that I'm getting back the information. Um, this is what the uh, this object looks like, the response object looks like. So it contains like the config, probably more information about like how we have passed to that one, the maximum, the transformation, the URL and everything. And the one that we're interested in is going to be just the data. So on that data, then we have like this uh, corresponding value that's going to be just sent to us. So as you can see on this case, uh, data is going to be just containing 19 is the number and, and it goes on like that. Every time that I'm clicking, then it's going to be just coming on this one. So, um, and you can have also like the catch over here. Uh, if there is any error, then you can also show that one over here. Uh, in case uh, if, if something is going wrong, because you know, like we don't have any control on what is going to be just happening over uh, over the server. Um, so in this case, if there is anything that you want to edit back out and then just show 
uh, or catch it and then handle it, then that's going to be just how you're going to handle it under, under the catch. So while we're here now, uh, you can see that this one is very, very straightforward, very easy, especially for the Git. Uh, and for the post, we're going to see additional examples on how we're going to do that one. But basically, it's going to be just pretty much the same way. Uh, you're going to have like the library and that library is going to be just responsible for handling all the, the communication between the server and then bringing us back the result that it's getting uh, from, from the server. Now with this, what we wanted to do is just to show uh, over here. Whenever there is a data, then we want to show it over here. Uh, the right way to do it is going to be just to use the user states. Uh, and we're going to take a look on that one when we um, address the hooks. But we're going to take a look like a, a quick hook on this one because we know at least how to handle or how to refer to this div uh, using the reference. And in order to do that, we're, we're going to be just using like the use ref hook uh, from um, the React. Had it been uh, on the class, we have already seen the ref way, but this one is like the uh, functional component. So the way how we're going to use that is we're going to say conus uh, and ref is going to be use ref. Uh, and we need to add the, uh, we need to import this one. The use ref is going to be just from here. Uh, and the whole concept is the same thing that we have seen earlier. So I can say ref uh, equals and ref. Uh, the, had it been like with the class, then we're going to say it like this ref, and then you're going to be just uh, create ref uh, as we have seen it seen it like in a, a couple of videos back. So if you want to check it for the class component, then you can go back and then just take a look at it. But if you are working on a functional component and then you want to use like the reference, then this is how you're going to do it. Now, once we get the, the, re, the response, we want to update the, the div. Now we have the reference to the div. So what we can do is ref dot current dot inner HTML then we're going to say response that uh, resp uh, yep, response that data. Uh, the reason that we, have, we are saying this one is because the data that we're getting is going to be just on the data. So if I'm clicking on this one, then you can see that 20 is the number of questions, popular party game, and that's what we are getting, but you know, just we're going to be just showing it over here as well. So every time that I'm clicking on this one, then the value that we're getting back from the server is going to be just replicated on the div. And again, there is a better way to do that one using the uh, the, the state. Uh, we're going to manage the state uh, through through this one and then just assign that one. Uh, we have already seen the state on how to manage that one on, on the class, but we haven't seen the state management on a function. So, but but we know how to implement the, uh, the ref and the ref is referring to that the div and you know just we can basically implement it directly in such a way. All right, so uh, hopefully you've got uh, like the information that you need on how we're going to be just communicating from the client to the server using the Axios uh, library. Uh, on the next one, we're going to use exactly the same uh, implementation, but using without the library that is using like the, the promise uh, directly on, on the React component. Um, so with that, uh, I'm going to conclude this one on this video. So if you find it um, useful, Please don't forget to uh, like the, the video. And then if you haven't done that yet, uh, please go ahead and then just subscribe. That would be helping us to help the algorithm so that you're going to see similar uh, videos whenever we are um, addressing them to you. So I'll see you on the next video. Thank you for your attention.